we'll look at electron configurations of monatomic ions. Electron configurations are an accounting of electrons. In general, when single main group atoms form ions, they tend to want electron configurations of their nearest noble gas. And this is a horizontal movement on the periodic table. And I want to emphasize main group atoms. So let's look at the periodic table and remind ourselves where the main group atoms are. It's group number one, which are the alkali metals, and the group number two, the alkali earths. And the other main groups are here the last six groups. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if we take a look at chlorine, for example, the closest noble gas to chlorine <clears throat> in horizontal movement is argon. And I emphasize horizontal movement because one could cheat and say I'll go up to neon or to krypton, but it's horizontal movement from one element to the next in the periodic table. So closest noble gas to chlorine is argon. So let's look at that for a moment. Chlorine, for example, forms an anion. And when neutral chlorine reacts, it picks up an electron from some other atom. We're not concerned with that right now. But it picks up an electron to form a chloride anion with a negative one charge. So neutral chlorine has 17 electrons. It picks up the one electron from some other atom. Again, we're not concerned with that right now, where that's coming from. And it after the reaction, it has 18 electrons. Remember that if neutral chlorine has 17 electrons, it has 17 protons. We know it has 17 protons because that's the atomic number in the periodic table. But if you just do the algebra real quick, if you have 17 positive charges along with 18 negative charges, that 18 came from 18 electrons after the reaction, you can end up with a net negative one charge. So again, there's the existing protons in chlorine, and there's the new total amount of electrons. So therefore, you end up with a negative one charge on the chlorine, and it's become an anion. Let's take a closer look at the periodic table again. There's chlorine, and there's the electron configuration, and we see the 17 electrons. And if we look at the orbital box diagram here, we see that we're one electron away from filling that 3p subshell. Well, if we add one more electron, we have 18. If we look at the periodic table, argon, the nearest noble gas, has 18 electrons. That's what we mean when these main group elements will move in a horizontal way to the nearest noble gas when they form, when these main group atoms form ions. So let's take a look at bromine. Predict, well, predict the charge on bromine, for example. Well, if you said Br negative 1, you'd be correct. So let's take a closer look at that. Bromine plus an electron would form Br negative. And bromine, neutral bromine has 35 electrons. It picks up an electron from some atom. I'm not concerned with that right now to form Br minus, which has, let me get this straight, 36 electrons. 
I just want to make sure I make a distinction between bromine and chlorine there. So we have bromine forming bromide and chlorine forming chloride. Now if we go back to the periodic table with regard to bromine, we said bromine has a total of bromide, excuse me, has a total of 36 electrons. Well, that's the same electron configuration or the same total electrons as krypton. So, review. Chloride and bromide. Chloride comes from neutral chlorine with this electron configuration. When it forms chloride, it picks up an electron and now has the, this new electron configuration which is exactly the same as argon. You can see that extra electron picked up in the 3p subshell. Bromine. There's the electron configuration for bromine. When it picks up an electron, it forms bromide and it has the electron configuration of krypton. And then we picked up the extra electron to fill that 4p subshell. Let's take a look at oxygen. Oops, all right. Oxygen. Predict what the charge would be on oxygen if oxygen forms a nion. Well, let's think about this movement, this horizontal movement to the nearest noble gas. Well, if we move forward, we only have to go one, two steps to neon. Well, horizontal movements, if we move backwards, we have to go through nitrogen, carbon, bromine, beryllium, lithium, until we finally hit helium. Hmm. It seems to me the shortest path to a noble gas is to move forward and go to neon. So oxygen forms what ion? It would have a positive or negative charge, and what would that charge be? Ask yourself that question. If you guessed oxygen negative 2, you'd be correct. Because an oxygen atom, oops, let me get my pencil back. An oxygen atom picks up two electrons. form O2 minus. Now, neutral oxygen atom has how many electrons? Look at the periodic table. Eight protons, eight electrons for a neutral oxygen atom. Picks up two electrons. Therefore, the O2 minus has a total of ten electrons. Oops. Ten electrons. And what noble gas has ten electrons? Neon. So, going back to the periodic table, there's oxygen, eight electrons, picks up two electrons, has the electron configuration like neon. So, there it is, the electron configuration for oxygen. And we can take a look at the orbital box diagram. There's two electrons missing to complete that 2p subshell. And if we move it over to neon, we can see we've completed the 2p subshell. So we have 10 electrons, which is the same amount in neon. Let's try another one. Try sulfur. What would your prediction be for sulfur? Sulfur would pick up 
just like oxygen, two electrons to form the sulfide anion with two negative. So sulfur has 16 electrons plus the two it picks up from some other atom to form sulfide ion which has 18 electrons. And what noble gas has 18 electrons? Argon. So, look at this again, the periodic table. There's sulfur, electron configuration. Missing two electrons. If it picks up those two electrons, it's just like argon.